Well, howdy there, partner. Welcome back to West Willow. Or whatever this is. Uh, last time, we found a circus. I'm sure we did something else, but my brain doesn't think that long. Sorry about missing a week. I, uh... uh I had a problem. Anyways, let's go and see what the shot show's about. Uh, that's an eye. Uh, I regret. Can you talk? Guess not. Take a closer look at them. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seemed at first. Plants. Jesus, I'm sorry. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an old lump at the, well, what you would call the base of his skull if he had one. The sort of crumpled, fleshy mask the size of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it almost looks like the crushed, shriveled, vestigial remains of a human head. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool. The legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. So, this, uh, circus gig... His hands slowly curl into fists, the knuckles turn white with tension. I see. Uh, do you blink? Or wink? I guess not. Okay, I'll see you around. Okay, what did this say originally? This guy is startling sight, even for the circus freak show. His entire head is one enormous eyeball. Once you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that, you have, not that he's got much choice. This man is neatly dressed through his suit is a bit threadbare out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Hello there, welcome to the chat show. My name's Douglas. Uh, I'm Jimmy. Delighted to meet you. So, uh, well, are you perhaps trying to think of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Jimmy. I am in a sideshow, after all. It is an obvious and natural question. Wait a minute. That last bit you said without moving your lip. I would have never known. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. He stands up, turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides. He has another face on the back of his head with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! <laughs> as he sits down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though not certainly not as much as you expect. Wasn't that surprising yet? A bit, yeah. How, uh, how, how the fuck do you do that? Douglas shrugs, holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so his other face can take a puff. Are you, uh, uh, what's the phrase? Siamese twins? Not exa not exactly. It's, uh, difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body with two faces? Well, it would be closer to... The truth to say, two instances of the same mind, uh, with, as you say, two faces. You're right, that doesn't make any sense at all. The feather face chuckles, Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. It took some getting used to, that is much, that much is quite certain. Jesus Christ, I can't read. Were you born like this? I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, apology not necessary. <laughs> Your knees must be erect. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. Why are you in the shy show? With the regular suit and haircut, you can easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown-making gesture that you didn't quite catch. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, it's uh, quite the life, you know, free room and board, travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. I'll talk to you later, Douglas. What are you doing to those people? What are you doing to those people? Alright, and this last lady... There's a lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. Box? Box. She nods to you. Er, hello. Hello there. Enjoying the carnival? Well, it is interesting. She smiles slightly. Yeah, it sure is. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. What's your name? I'm Shannon. And you? I'm uh, Jimmy here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Jimmy. Why are you in the box? <laughs> it's 
a rather personal question. Is it? Oh, sorry, I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Janet whistles to signal the clown. He moseys over, unlocks the door in the front of the box, throws it open with theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes, pipes, ticking clockwork gears, and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slosh through the tubes. A large bellows near the top inflates and begins to slowly deflate. What do you think? It, is it some kind of trick? You're... You, you're fuddled up behind a mirror in there or something? No trick. The clown chuckles and walks around the back of the box. He opens a hatch and waves at you through it, and then saunters back to his place by the shelves. It's horrifying. Yep, that's an accurate description. I'm sorry, I hope I haven't insulted you. No, no, no offense. I've only seen myself once in a mirror, and it looks quite a while ago. So you get used to the situation. Can I examine your work? You watch the various liquids slosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute. Weird, gross, but it is indeed educational. Anatomical learning. Hey. How did this happen? I'm sorry, I can't talk about that. Oh, of course, it must be a painful memory. Her calm, composed face creases to a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you. I'm gonna go kill this clown. Oh my god. You mean the freaks? Ain't they a scream? The one with the giant eyeball on the head is my favorite. Quite the nice fella. Does he ever blink? You mean wink? No. Nope, eyelid. No eyelids. I gotta toss a bucket of water over him every once in a while so we don't get too dry. Yeah, looks like it's getting about time. Excuse me for a minute. There's something to do with that. I don't know what. Ooh. All right, partner, what are we doing? Suit yourself. Oh. Uh, where are we going? What do you think we should do next? Oh, yeah. I said you told the bartender at Jewel Water Saloon and Dirt you try and fix their broken piano player. Oh, thanks for the reminder. I can go do that real quick. Broken piano player. Chirp. You lift up the piano player's coat to reveal a hatch on his back that leads to his innards. It's locked, but not a very good lock. I'll pick the lock. You pick the lock and open the hatch, check out some of the machinery inside. There's obviously something wrong given all the plinking and sprunging, clicking noise coming out of the gears and stuff. It looks pretty complicated. I'll see. I see what's wrong. You can recalibrate some of the springs, re-rank some of the gears, and the machinery inside starts operating smoothly. Uh, the music improves immediately. Nothing to it. Hey, uh, who's the old man about the piano? Oh, that's old Elbowley. Ellsbury, tragic fella. He was a writer and a poet and came back to sell a story, but no one he was buying. Too weird a story. It's fantastical like. Too bad. I love that stuff. Well, it don't matter much now. He had to get normal work to make ends meet. Did pass him <laughs> as a prospector until one day he lost his mind in his mind. He's what now? You know what I mean. He saw something. Something that made him stop telling his weird tale. Something that made him stop talking near completely. Come to that. He just stands there by the piano nowadays. He seems it seems to calm him down. As long as he doesn't make any trouble, I don't mind him. Oh, sorry, honestly. <laughs> Poor fella. I fixed that piano player for you. I thought so. He sounded much better. Thanks a heap, Jimmy. I'd offer you a free room in exchange, but you already got one. Oh, I see. Need up with anything? Nope, everything's right around here. All right. Do I have any experience? Can I get another level in Dirty Poker? I'll come back and play poker one day. Hey, where are we going? What do you think we should do next? Oh, well, looks like we're going to have to fix some... Yeah, any other ideas? I'll just you could turn a bag of yeast to the breadwood mare. Anything else? 
Royal Bean wants you to recover stolen jelly beans from goblins living in the giant cactus near his house. Oh, yeah. Uh, did we ever finish that? Obviously not, because... You bet. What you got, Sally? Disposable binoculars, one side, pick it, pick it, pick it. I'll buy your needles. And, yeah, I'll buy a lock, too. And we're off. We are going to old granddad. I don't remember why we left and didn't finish it, but pop it open. Ooh, a rancher's pistol. It's terrible. All right, and uh, let me see what's going on here. Hello, having s uh, syrups? Oh, yeah, we need the... Uh... Oh, find a tap. You also find an empty jar in the pile, which will be handy. Tap it. I got cactus syrup. Ow. Hi, right, what's going on there, mate? Uh, here's cactus syrup. His guard guzzles. The guard guzzles the entire bottle on a single long draw. It's both fascinating and disgusting. Needing more for proper bribing. Of course you are. This is enough. This time the guard moves away from the ladder so they have plenty of room to guzzle the syrup. God damn it. Hello, hi. Hi, can I? Nope. Okay, can I? Yep. Bringing me goblin elixir. What's that? A potion of extra delicious being. So good. Okay, I'll go get that then. Is it in this room? All right. The table is covered with flasks, beakers, bottles, tubes, burners, and all other equipment that makes up a super elaborate alchemy table, including a whole bunch of stuff colored liquids and powders and stuff. Whatever. Make a goblin elixir. Less well, easy for you to say. Look for some instructions. You find a scrap of paper in a drawer that looks like maybe instructions for an elixir, but it's all in goblin science jargon that you don't understand at all. Start mixing things up, I guess. We'll start with a uh, some black oil. And then I'll add some indigo ooze and chartreuse liquid. And I'll spit in it. <laughs> you work up a good mouthful of saliva. Uh, uh, you manage to pinch the concoction out the window and duck under the table just in time. It explodes with a tooth rattling bang. Jeez, this alchemy stuff is tricky. Let's try again. Some clear ooze with chartreuse granules and purple fluid. You add some purple fluid to the mixture. The mixture turns pink and starts to smoke. I didn't even read all these. The mixture turns white and starts to smoke a little. Uh, stir it up. The mixture turns mauve and starts smoking like crazy. After a second, though, it settles down. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem immediately life-threatening. Smells terrible, though. I'll keep it. Hey, buddy, I got your goblin elixir. No, don't go downstairs. Hi, ready for bribing? Here's your elixir, probably. Is it good? Yes, perfect. All right. Oh, no. Holy crap, if this isn't the most disturbing thing that you've ever seen, I don't want to know what happens to this. Hey, uh, guys, those jelly beans. Can I have them? Oh, what? Our fruit rocks? No. No taking our fruit rocks. These being ours, not for you taking. Jeez Louise. Well, what's your plan for dealing with this horror? Yank a goblin off the pile and fight it. Pop three off and fight them. The same again except five. Talk to it slash them. But not looking like you're eating them. Jar is still full. What? Eating? Fruit rocks are not for eating. Fruit rocks are just for looking at. You just looking at them? Not fitting through floor hole. Can't leaving room. Fruit rocks only entertainment being. Good grief, that's sad. I'll try and help him out. Okay, how about I teach you something else for entertaining? Better than looking at fruit rocks. Okay, sounding good. I agree. I'm not certain what being better than fruit rocks looking at. How about poker? You pull out a spare deck of cards, pick a couple of handful of cactus spines off the floor, and use poker chips, and give them a quick poker playing tutorial once they get themselves rearranged they can see each other's cars they take it to it pretty quickly excellent thank you 
Oh, raw bean, I got your jelly beans. No hiccups, no hiccups, no hiccups. How you doing there? Yeah, I got him. Wonderful. Good job, kid. Looks like they're all here. The goblins didn't need any. It's a very long and weird story. Well, never mind then. You've done a swell job, kid. I only got one more jar of jelly beans missing. They were stolen by a gang of damn hippies. Why'd they take them? Heck, who knows what a hippie's thinking. <laughs> all I know is they headed a bit south. A uh, shroom cave. Shroom cave? Kellogg Ranch. Uh, you see a building off in the distance. The spurs Jolene towards them to investigate. It turns out the old Kellogg Sanatorium. You remember reading about this place. Crazy guy obsessed with the bodily and spiritual plurality. Oh my god. Charging rich people a bad arm and a leg. Yeah, I'll look it up. Hello there. Oh. There's the petting game. Boy, there sure is a lot of books on enemas on this shelf. A grotesque animal track. They've got a spleen mixed up with the liver. Fix it. Hell yeah. Mostly medical journals and Bibles. All right. Uh, hello. Hello. So, uh, are you a ghost? Yes, it does appear so. But alas. Without me here to instruct them, my regimen of purity of all patent and fled. I don't know why I'm reading. That's probably not exactly why. They're likely out ravaging the countryside in their own bodies. One cannot have purity of the soul without purity of the body, you know. What's this whole purity kick with about you anyway? My threefold path to eliminating the corruption of influence. Would you like to hear about it? Sure, lay it on me. First step is I call purity of glands. One must rid oneself of all romantic and sexual desires and see if any self-polluting activities. You mean like so smoking cigars? Well, yes, but I'm speaking of more, you know, nighttime activities alone. What? Anyways, the first step. <laughs> What's the second step? Second step of purity of guts. This is accomplished through frequent cold water enemas. Jesus Christ. And the consumption of wholesome, nutritious grain flakes manufactured through my personal, scientifically developed recipe. Fucking goddamn capitalist. What makes them any different from other breakfast cereals? Did you not hear me? The recipe is scientifically developed. Alright, what's the third step then? The final step is purity of muscles. I developed an extensive exercise regime featuring several workout machines that I have invented myself. Neat. And all this together, what was it? My regimen elites eliminates corrupting influence from the body, thus purifying the body, mind, and soul. Well, that sounds like a good result for to shoot for. And it works. It certainly does. Just look at me. You're dead. Only coincidentally. Fair enough. Keep calling him and enjoy nothing. There's a skeleton in this bed and it's wearing weird metal pants. Chastity pants? Why would I wear those? It's locked here and it's uh, not unexpectedly locked. I open it. Kellogg's grain flake recipe and a cowboy chef hat. Four parts barley, one part oats, three parts spelt. Pressed to 91 PSI, cooked for 8 minutes at 640 degrees. Alright. Pick the locker, open it. Sugared pork balls, peppermint drops, Kellogg Ranch workout regimen. Warm up. Can I use it? Can I, can I work out right now? Warm up stretching, lung expansion, two reps, equilibrium maintenance stressing. Skeleton vibration, three reps, cooldown stretching. Lots of stretching. Pick the locker, open it. The only thing inside is industrial diary. Give you them hot secrets. You pick up the diary and blow off some of the dust. The diary says Diary of Smith. The first name have worn away, but you can not tell it was longer than seven letters. Sadly, the contents aren't particularly juicy. The author joined Kellogg's health program because she had seen several relatives with poor health and wanted to preserve her own. She found the ranch to be pretty boring, but appreciated the lack of anything much to do gave her plenty of time to spend knitting, which was her favorite hobby. The last entry mentions Kellogg's death, rumored to be 
Rumored but unconfirmed to be due to a brain aneurysm caused by outrage at hearing a dirty joke. The author was returning home. I guess she forgot her diary when she left. Not particularly hot at all. Lock, pick it, open it. I got three needles. Lock, pick it, open it. I got a bottle of lanad, nad, 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 Locker sold the dirty laundry, assuming the laundry was the bomb pile. Kurt's fit headband. I had those already. You fucking suck. Bed is empty. Bed is empty. Bed is empty. Oh, oh, bed is covered in bones. I'll take them bones. There's scrap paper under the pillow. It looks like a torn out part of the diary page. It's supposed to achieve purity of glands, but I can't stay and sleep in those metal pants. They're so noisy, especially when I... <laughs> What's in this here kitchen? It's a combination of grain shifter, flour mill, who knows what. The grains are, grain hoppers are currently empty. The label on this says dough press. It's a large oven, but it doesn't have a door, just a wide slot. All right. What are the rules? There's a list of draconian fitness rules. Guess this is a sanatorium to adhere to. According to the scale, you weigh four newtons. You don't know how to use this scale correctly. Years worth of heightened weight recordings for ranch customers. Measure yourself. You are now pints and nine horses tall. I'm s or six. I'm six nine. God damn, tall man. Gymnasium. Oh my god. Your body is still wrong. Alright, hook me up. The Stretch Master 4000. You strap yourself into the machine and allows you to inflict some warm up stretches on you. Keep going. The machine pulls too hard, which promptly yanks one of your shoulders out of the socket. Ow, 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 ow. You've had it with fitness. Maybe you can try again later. Fair enough. It's the Lung Flex. Suck on the blast hole. You've had enough exercise for now. This place is terrible. It's the vibromatic. Oh, oh, I did it wrong. I need to go sleep now. Oop. Oh, there's another one. Secret hidden plants must become plant lord. The barn door is locked. Pick needle. The barn door is locked. You definitely pick the complicated lock, and I'll go inside. Whoa, there's a whole lot of grain in here. If you ever need a lot of grain, you know where to find it. Unlimited grain. God damn. Ho! Oh, there is a lot of grain. Sure. Needle. 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 A lot of fertilizer, a lot of grain. And whatever this is. There's a coil of barbed wire hanging from the nail here. Big coil of barbed wire. Needle. Alright, well I guess I'll come back here uh, after I sleep. If I don't forget. I, I, I probably won't forget. Hey, I got your yeast, Mr. Breadwood, sir. Alright. Any luck recovering our yeast from those abandoned up at the old Schmarch Brewery? Sure did. Well done. That's quite a hip. Thank you. Happy to help. Mary glances at a list of problems. Off to help with this problem. Oh, thank you. I serve you Uh, already book, logging permit, soup shortage, missing bread. The missing bread, the most important. The Baker Boys hide out. The Baker Boys cleaned our banks right out. Not a bit fabulous, if you ask me. Uh, fortunately, they can have two secretive locations. All right. All right. I'll get it right back. Uh, I think I will do that in the next episode, though. I feel like we experienced a lot this episode, and my brain needs some time to compensate. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh... If you did, drop a like and I'll see you next episode. See you next week. Adios. Be kind.